Hello, this is the Happy Heat Pump podcast. We give you lots of chat about heat pumps. I'm Evan Davis. This is a side hustle for me, a hobby. I'm with Bean Beanland of the Heat Pump Federation. He lives and breathes heat pumps in his day job, so he can answer all questions about them. I hope you've been enjoying uh, these podcasts. We're recording this one towards the end of 2024. And we thought it would be a good idea to have a think about whether 2025 is going to be a big year for heat pumps. And basically that's because there have been various changes in the uh, regulatory and subsidy environment um, that maybe will help heat pumps take off. Um, So Bean, roughly speaking, do you know How many heat pumps we install each year? I didn't tell you I was going to ask you that. Quiz question. How many heat pumps, residential heat pump? It's about, it's tens of thousands. Is that right? 60,000, 70,000? Yeah, 70 to 80,000. 70 to 80,000. Okay. Um, And that's been growing? Yeah, that's grown reasonably substantially. I wouldn't say we're quite doubling the market year on year, but it's certainly... It's double-digit growth. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's not like 3%. It's like sort of 50%. Yeah. Awesome. The, if you look at the economy as a whole, the green economy grew by 9%. And so any chance of the exchequer ought to be grabbing the green opportunities. Now, 2025, we would expect heat pump installation to grow again, right? Yeah. And let us go through one or two of the things that have changed that might mean 2025 will see growth, strong growth compared to 2024, maybe break through 100,000. I would certainly like to think so. Yeah. So first of all, the boiler upgrade scheme. Now that's already existed. So that has changed a bit though, is that right? So the boiler upgrade scheme was brought in in 2022, I think, if I recall. Uh, the scale of the grant, so this is a one-off grant, so it's a capital contribution. It's a big cost. You're replacing a gas boiler with a heat pump. You're replacing an eligible system with a heat pump. It's not just for gas boilers. So gas, oil, um, some direct electric also qualify, coal, of course. Um, so uh, the last government increased the scale of the grant. When it was launched, it was £5,000 for air source Uh It's now seven and a half thousand pounds for an air source unit, which is, I think, actually a pretty generous uh, contribution. The average cost under the scheme at the moment, the total cost, which could include things like radiator upgrades and what have you, where they're required, and that's not a given, um, is uh, just over 13,000 pounds. So seven and a half thousand pounds is more than 50%. So I think that's reasonably generous. So the uplift has made a massive difference. There's no doubt about it. We've probably now hit the sweet spot in terms of the scale of contribution that's needed to really stimulate the market. We're also beginning to um, kick, kick down some of the barriers. So the, the border arch kicking budget has just been increased again. So the amount of money in the pot, so the number of schemes that will be supported, uh, was increased, increased for this year in order to make sure we didn't run out of vouchers. The budget for next year has been almost doubled over the previous allocation. So, absolutely, we're on a fairly sharp upward. We're engaging some some pretty good provision for 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 some serious growth. So, that's important. That is really really important, important. and it's very important for people to understand that that means that the chances are that if they're planning to do something in three months, six months' time, that the monies will be available to them at that at that point. Sure, but does the boiler upgrade? Is it just a pot? So. If it runs out, you just can't get it because it's gone. If it's a pot, it is a pot. I thought it was anyone who installed the heat pump got it. No, it is a pot with a defined budget. However, in this current year, uh, as we ran through October, we were beginning to look at deployment rates that were getting us close to the ceiling. Um, I'm delighted to say that the uh, civil servants in Desnes recognized this you know, when we were discussing our industry, we were discussing it with them. They recognised it. They put it to ministers. Ministers managed to get it to the treasury, and there was a provision of increased funding, or in the short notice, for this pot for this year, which is which is really good response from from the the current government. So that was good, and they've now said just increase the available funding for next year. So that's fantastic. The scheme is currently scheduled to run until twenty twenty eight. Right. So, can I ask you something though? Boiler upgrade, if I put in an air to 
air heat pump. Am I am I not covered by the boiler upgrade? Correct. At the moment, at the regulation... It's weird, because that's really forcing you down one route. It may not be the best route. We've talked about this, right? Early days. We have. Early days. We have. So, look, the regulations at the moment require, and this is a hangover from the renewable heat incentive, which was the previous scheme, require the delivery media into the house of the heat to be water, i.e. radiators or under I, I can't understand why you would have that built into a subject. Why does the government care whether I'm putting air to air, air to water? Okay, I think, I don't know exactly what the thought process was, but I suspect it's something to do with a hangover that said back in 2008, when the 8-9, when the European directive was brought in that drove the original renewable heat incentive, cooling was considered to be the work of the devil. We mustn't encourage people to do cooling, it's wasteful. Gotcha. And so, so air is better for cooling, which was predominantly being deployed for cooling because it's what we would call air conditioning systems. That was seen to be something we should frown upon. But of course, we are now recognizing that overheating is actually potentially just as dangerous as, un as, as overheating. But anyway, that... that that right, becomes the hangover. But what we've got to recognise also is that the market for air-to-air -air heat pumps in the UK is already quite strong. We're putting about 180,000 systems in a year. So it's, it's, it's a big market already. But that, what, that mostly okay, for air conditioning. Air conditioning. It's just that an air conditioning unit is an air-to-air -air heat pump. So there's a lot of skill set available and a big workforce available there. Uh, it's also much more commoditized, so it's a relatively low-cost intervention. So if government were to review the boiler upgrade scheme, and I suspect there will be a review uh, that, that, challenge. Code, yeah. that they may well consider extending to other versions of heat pump technologies or in fact other decarbonization technologies. And we talked about other electrical devices in the past. Um, if that extension is made, then we will be looking at probably variable rates because to give seven and a half thousand pounds to a small bungalow, for example, that's having an air to air system put in would probably be the overdoing it we're being generous yeah okay no that's really that's really really interesting but that's the boiler upgrade scheme and they've been putting enough money in the pot to make sure everybody who's putting one in can get it and um that carries over and there's money in the pot more money in the pot for 2025 now the other thing about the new year as opposed to the last year and you're going to have to tell me what's happened is they have made a slew of other changes to planning and other regulations involving heat pumps. And this is going to make it easier to basically just plonk a heat pump and not have to ask yeah. ask someone. I'd like to think we're carefully positioning the heat pump to block them around. I mean, planning reform is, is, is beyond our, our scope here, but it's a very interesting topic and it's a big theme yeah. of this government. I think that, you know, we, we've been arguing with government, and of course, this is no longer Department of Energy Security and Net Zero. It's now Ministry of Housing and Local Government. Uh -huh. um, we've been arguing for some time that permitted development rights, which were last reviewed, I think I'm right in saying in 2015, have not kept pace with changes to technology, the changes, the, the changes to the way we use technologies, and in fact, the, the fact that the technology itself is becoming more efficient, quieter. We've talked about noise before. Uh, and so this was an opportunity to sort of reset the dial. Permitted development rights are basically, you can put this in without getting planning permission. Yeah. And it can be outside your building and the council can't say you're not allowed to have it. Absolutely right. I still have to meet the conditions. Right. There, there, are, there are conditions. But, Correct. But, but, but. So what changed in 2024 that will make it easier to be putting heat pumps in in 2025? The easy answer is nothing because we haven't actually got the legislation yet. But the announcement has been made and we're now just waiting for parliamentary time to get the statutory instrument through to enact the changes. So we know what's coming. We're just not exactly sure yet on the time frame. We're waiting for an announcement on the time frame. But it will but be, it will hit in 2025. So not, we're not talking 2029. I mean, having made the announcement clearly, they now, there's an obligation to get on with it. And the permitted development will be, is, is that essentially a lot of mainstream heat pumps that people would want to buy and install. Yeah. They don't need to get planning permission. Correct. What about, because the really big one is the, um, I'm not allowed to put it one meter within one metre of my neighbour's property. Uh, it's one metre of the boundary. 
it's not the neighbor's property, it's the boundary. So the changes that are coming through are, there is a current ruling that says you cannot go closer than one meter to your boundary. That's going. There's a regulation at the moment which says that the unit has to be less than 0.6 of a cubic meter in volume. So you're restricting the volume. And again, in a previous episode, we've talked about size. Yeah. Because uh, bigger so can be quieter. That, that stipulation is going. That's increasing to 1.5 cubic meters, which means you can put more acoustic attenuation, bigger fans, slower fan speed, all good news around, around the, uh, the noise emissions. Um, you can now, if you have a single detached dwelling, that needs more than one device, i.e. you need two devices, your heat load is that much bigger, you need two units, you can now get that under permitted development, provided you meet the conditions. And from an air-to-air -air perspective, which currently did not enjoy permitted development, so air conditioning units do not get permitted development, they are going to be included, provided they meet the conditions. Okay. The conditions are largely around now will be down to, you can put it against the boundary if you wish, you can put it anywhere within reason. There are still requirements protecting listed buildings and conservation areas. Um, uh, but the other regulation which is remaining is being able to pass the microgeneration certification scheme O2O noise assessment. That noise assessment is being rewritten. Uh, and as long as you can pass that, then, and you meet all the other conditions. So it will make a massive change. Um, what about the prices? Do we think prices of heat pumps are going to fall in 2025? Good time to buy. I, I, I don't think that the price of the unit is going to fall because look, heat pump technology is already commoditized around the world. You know, we're just backward in coming forwards in the UK. What we will see is economies of scale. Uh, what we are going to see is installers becoming increasingly expert. Um, and getting better at what they're doing. Up yeah. The process and what they're doing. Um, there is a boiler, what's it called? The thing, the boiler, the gas boiler sellers have to, the, the boiler makers have to sell a certain number of heat Oh, pump. right, yeah. And so that means if they're like, it's like the car market. Yeah. You, you, you've got to sell a certain proportion yep. of each. And if you're not making heat pumps, then you've got to pay someone who is making heat pumps just being a bit to get credit. You're quite yeah. right. So in the yeah. same way that there's a bit of a row going on about car sales at the moment. Um, yeah, so we have something called the Clean Heat Market Mechanism. Yeah. Uh, it was first mooted by the last government. In the end, they decided not to pursue it. Uh, it has been resurrected and brought back, and we now have confirmation. So one of the other announcements we had in the last couple of weeks was... We are going to get the clean heat market mechanism. Now, this has morphed, I think, from its original intention. The original intention was to try and drive sales, but of course, it's a supply side initiative, not a demand side initiative. So you can force manufacturers to try and sell the things, but if no one wants to buy them, you just create. Which is where the car manufacturers say that, that we're making the car. Well, that's exactly what the boiler manufacturer said. And, and their response was, well, we're going to stick £120 on the price of a boiler in order to compensate ourselves for the yeah. fact that we're going to get fined. Well, they were assuming, of course, is that you weren't going to sell any heat pumps, which is clearly nonsense because they're already selling heat mm -hmm. pumps. So the, under the new um, revised scheme, the fine, the penalty for missing a target uh, is been reduced to only £500 per unit. The target uh, is significantly reduced because uh, we are already selling more heat pumps. So the difference you know, that we've got to make up is, is much, much smaller. And if we get the sort of growth that I'm expecting, it shouldn't be a problem. 6% um, of sales is their target. Now, some boiler manufacturers, of course, are, may already be doing 6%. You look at people like Valent, who have been making heat pumps and boilers together for years. Uh, they may already be doing 6%. I don't know. That's understandably. They're quite cautious about their data. Um, what I think this scheme has now become, and what I think we should be flagging it as, is a jobs protection mechanism. Because the last thing the UK needs is to surrender UK manufacturing jobs in the boiler industry to foreign merit of sing it with imported heat pumps. So I would like to think, and I'd like to see the, the 
bought your manufacturers who are not yet taking the step to produce in the UK, seeing this as an opportunity to, to start producing, start swinging their production around mm -hmm. and using their skilled workforce that they've already got, keeping the jobs in the UK. And potentially there will be an export market because, you know, we're good at making heat pumps, actually. We're been quite good at pillars, haven't we? I mean, it's happened for you. So there's no reason why we can't be making some extremely good machines. And the, the uh, flip side to the clean heat market mechanism coin has been the heat pump investment accelerator program. And government have, again, part of the recent announcements, just provided the first investment support to a boiler manufacturer to support their heat pump production investments. Uh, so, you know, you've got the penalties on one hand, but you've got up and then stick to manufacturers. If you take the, if you take the step to invest in production plant, we will help you out with that. So look at this. It does look like we might be moving towards, you know, 2025 being quite a, a big year for heat pumps, a hundred thousand, potentially more than a hundred thousand, a whole lot of things coming in to make it easier. Just a final point, you know, I, it's very interesting how, and we should do this as a future episode, how heat pumps managed to drift into culture war territory between <laughs> some who's, who felt they were woke, basically, and others who felt they were a very good idea. And I wonder whether that um, that's actually sort of helping heat pumps, really. It's kind of giving, it's raising their profile a little bit. It's making them talked about that even if you have a lot of haters of heat pumps, and there are a lot. I wonder whether that's, that's actually been good for the heat pump conversation. Yeah, I mean, this is the sort of, there's no such thing as bad publicity type argument, isn't it? Um, I think you're right. I mean, there are people who just don't like them for the sake of not liking them. Uh, there are lots of people who don't like change, and that's understandable. I'm sure that there are plenty of things that I would say I don't like change. Um, whether they're woke or not, I don't know, because look, the first, no, it's not the first heat pump predates the first gas fired boiler. And we, we hear lots of talk at the moment about hydrogen ready boilers, you know, on the basis that, well, perhaps hydrogen is the answer, but our heat pumps have been fusion ready since 1855. So there's just as much. No, no, no. I'm not going to I'm not litigating the issue now. I'm just saying, as we go into 2025. Maybe the fact there's been conversation and people have been getting worked up about yeah. heat pumps in all directions. Maybe that's going to help. Anyway, look, you're right. that, that's, there's a lot to think about in the uh, year coming up. And uh, we are here and we'll still be talking about heat pumps in 2025. Um, thanks for joining us. Do leave comments and questions wherever you like to do that. And you can always email us as well at happyheatpumppod at gmail.com. Happyheatpumppod at gmail.com and um, have a happy new year as well from Bean and I. <laughs>